joining us now, joining us now to talk more about Ebola and what may be next, Dr. Sanjay Jain, board certified physician and author of Optimal Living. Dr. Jain, it is so good to have you joining us from Washington today. Thank and you. I think it's safe to say, Sanjay, there are elements of Dr. Brantley's survival that indeed could be called miraculous. So what happens when you survive Ebola? You know, I am really ecstatic. Everybody should be ecstatic to, to hear these two individuals to be released and, and being taken care of. It's a, it's a great news. So I think it's really hopeful for the medical community and also for the world to see that Ebola and, and it, we're getting at the forefront of this fight against Ebola. So what do we look at looking forward? You know, at, at least in the United States, I'm, I'm actually very comfortable with our care. We've got the best medical care in the world. My concern is actually what's gonna happen in, in how they're gonna contain in Africa. As we're hearing, you know, there's a lot of deaths in Africa, but how well are they containing? And that's my concern. So we really have to not get complacent. We got some great news, but we cannot be complacent. So doctor, talk to us about the ZMAP drug. Was that the cure or was it a combination of the experimental drug and the acute care at Emory Hospital? So ZMAP is the experimental drug that they've used to treat these two individuals in Emory Hospital. And it's actually been uh, used for a few other patients as well. They found some really good results. So with ZMAP, it's actually, a, it's a serum. It, they have antibodies, from, they tested it from lab animals. So it's been very positive. So I'm very excited about this new drug. It's from MAP Pharmaceuticals. So this has been working pretty well, but you know they still have, they, it's still experimental. So there's a lot of ethical issues that's involved. So who who gets to use it? Who doesn't get to use it? But the use it. But the reports right now are really great. So I'm really excited. Well, it was really exciting to see their recovery. Trying to mass produce. I mean, I know you said the legal implications are you know a little tricky, but are they trying to get this so we can ship it over to Africa? Well, right now they're fast tracking this medication, so there's a you know there's always a there's a limit in terms of the supply and how they're getting it produced. It's being produced out of Kentucky, so they're really kind of working on getting it going. But it's more triage in terms of what stage of disease, what stage of disease is being implemented, and who so who gets it. So in terms of who decides on who gets treated, that's not uh, where I'm aware of how they're deciding that. But it's really about trying to get some of it out there. So they're still working on that. Uh, Dr. Jane, you mentioned a couple of minutes ago your concern being obviously Africa, what's going on there. We're, we're getting reports that Ebola could be spreading to Asia. I, I want to know if you find these reports credible, and if so, is it cropping up organically, or is it being spread by people in Africa getting on airliners and going to Asia? Well, there was one report I heard about someone from Saudi Arabia, more in the Middle East. I haven't heard about Asia, but the problem is, and what the airline industry is actually doing is they're actually at the at, at the airports really screening the people in terms of traveling. So all the three countries, uh, the Guinea, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone, they really stopped air travel altogether. But even at some of the outlying countries in Africa, they're really screening people at the airports. So it's very important that they really be aggressive in screening people in terms of travel. Now, in terms of travel uh, in trains and other modes, I don't have any information on that, but in terms of the, there's always concern. You cannot discount the fact that, you know, even a small percentage is of concern, but from what I'm getting reports, things are being very aggressive and very positive, especially at the airports. Well, we could, well, we could talk about airports. We can talk about the outstanding facilities at, at Emory in Atlanta. Sanjay, we, we had some footage of very primitive conditions in Africa trying to deal with the disease. And it, it, it brings us back to the question of ZMAP and other drugs and other drugs like it uh, to, to expedite the distribution or the permission to use it. Uh, I guess you have to run a bureaucratic maze. About 30 seconds, what's the best case scenario to get something possible? Will it still take a year, two years? It's gonna take a lot of time because first of all, they have to go through the whole, as you said, the bureaucratic process of going through this experimental drug. And then it's distribution. You're talking about these third world countries out there that you're really limited try to getting out there. And we just heard reports about people uh, ransacking some of these health clinics, pillaging them. So it's really a bad sanitary situation. And even doctors and some other people don't have hand, hand facilities to wash their hands. Oh, this is very That's tough. Sanjay Jane, we'll have to leave it there. We thanks for your insight and analysis and America's Forum will continue.